morning. New boat, new adventure. We just arrived in Tijuana on the opposite diagonal, opposite of the side of the country last night. Her good friend Scott picked us up in the van and we drove down to the boat in Ensenada. Robbie and I will be helping Scott to deliver a 54-foot Morgan racer named Rage into the Sea of Cortez, where she can begin to undergo a proper refit. We have to look over all the systems together and get her ready to travel roughly 1,200 nautical miles as safely as possible. We made it back to Baja California, baby. Welcome to Tijuana. Marina Corral is a new place for Robbie and me. Located about 2.5 nautical miles north of Ensenada main port, we sailed right past this marina the first time that we arrived in Mexico aboard Rosa. Scott had already taken the measurements of the fore and back stays, and Christian, a family member who owns the boat, arrived laden with many needed boat parts, including partial new rigging. We would also take a trip out in Scott's van again to his own boat to pick up additional safety gear. Jigging is very energy intensive because you're dropping and you're like jigging it up. Especially when you're taking a thousand feet of water, it's like exhausting. Ensenada is a busy cruise ship stop, a commercial hub, and fishing port of Mexico. This coastline and general vicinity is said to have been the birthplace of the Margarita. The boatyards here are a little less pricey than those found on the U.S. side of the border, but not by much. So our friend has been working hard to get off the hard ASAP. Having a boat nearby sure was handy though, as it allowed us to make sure that we had all those small safety items that we needed for the trip, like sewing kit and bungs. Nice boat, huh? It's very interesting interior. I love the salmon pink kitchen. Now we're ready. I drink a rum, now we're ready. What do you guys think of wabi-sabi? Hey, wabi-sabi. So roomy. <laughs> you know wabi-sabi. I know wabi-sabi. Perfect for the kids. Yeah. <laughs> I can see a bunch of little kids running around in this cockpit. We were definitely going to be implementing some of that wabi-sabi aboard Rage. With a broken backstay and some other rigging on the edge of snapping, there were going to be a lot of imperfect adjustments and jury rigs to be done before sailing. This twin sheave block and tackle system was to make sure that no one on the crew would have to do any particularly heavy lifting to get up the mast. Using this method, we sent the pulley up to open the length of rope needed to get to the top, brought it all down, because it gives you, you've got the length of what you're going up. And then sent Scott up again, along with a second safety halyard attached and a new stay attached to the bosun's chair. We also had two halyards attached to cleats at the stern to act as temporary backstays. She's, she's been putting me up the mast 10 times already in the last two months, so. While I took on the extra halyard slack, Robbie made sure that there were no twists and turns in the new backstay as it went up. Even though we trust that Scott was completely accurate with his measurements, we had yet to determine if the extra toggle was going to be needed. Robbie attached the new turnbuckle so that the studs were threaded on equally and completely, and now we just had to drop that pin in and all would be finished. Uh, we'll definitely go straight in. Oof, it's gonna be tight. Uh, yeah, but it's gonna go in. The stay was misleadingly heavy though and difficult to pull down. More than that, you're better off putting off here down on, on, on the turn back with itself. Yeah. Yeah, you can put this like this. We realized quickly that the measurements were so accurate that Robbie just needed to back off or unscrew the studs from the turnbuckle by a couple of millimeters. I can, uh. I can go get the Atlantic coat in my boat. Oh, there you go. 
Yeah. And now the pin went in. Yes. It's just that easy. You just can put an extra inch. Loosen the No, I, I don't like loosening them too much. The forward stay was also going to have to be replaced, precisely because the state of the wire was unknown, hidden within the foils of the roller furler. And it was important to inspect the rigging carefully, precisely because of small details like this one. There, yeah. that, that's all that, that was. <laughs> We're pretty certain that the forward stay was one cotter pin and perhaps several ocean waves away from detaching completely. And you tied it off? So it can't go too far? Wait. Well, maybe a few big ocean waves away from it. Just need my fat ass to do it. <laughs> now we can repeat the task for the four stay, only this time using another halyard to send down the old stay and furler, which would need to be disassembled, perhaps for future use. But for now, to keep things simple, we would be using a hanked on jib. Super simple. It should be like that. So technically this, even if you don't bend it, the chance of that coming out, it's not like the other one that was downward and loose. This, that way and this way. And that's a so lot. Gra gravity, gravity helps. helps instead of being your enemy. So I had it on my bows you and seat. You know <laughs> Like that. It was a little heavy. I'm not used to these heavy cables, you know. <laughs> And I heard the stitches start to go like, and, but something was holding up the cable. Remember, I looked down and said, what's up with that cable? And I heard pop, pop. And I reached down and I literally grabbed it as it was like uh. into my hand. So, lesson learned, tie your sh off to something. After lana coating the new stays and spraying down the old turnbuckles with penetrating solvent and silicone lubricant, Robbie could begin lightly tuning the rig. Is it pretty seized up? No, the turnbuckles really lose the silicon, like totally loosen it up. Oh, that's good. We had to figure out some of the electrical systems, such as the windlass, which had a mysterious separate switch. Yeah, huh. we're not working. And we had to make sure the engine was working. No, we got an issue because it fired right up. Where's the meter screw on this particular engine? Is that the manual? Yep. Yeah, I believe it's this one. It's a brand new Yanmar, but the fuel had been tainted by a dirty fuel tank on the trip down from California. The tank had since been cleaned, the fuel polished, and we hoped that this hiccup was simply air in the system. An ancient macerator is supposed to deposit gray water from the galley overboard, but it wasn't working anymore. So we would need to reroute the sink drain directly to the through hull. I think there's gonna be no water in it, man. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't wrong, wrong. Not so much. I think there's gonna be no water in it, man. We can Oh! Oh! It was like poop in there! <laughs> Did you see it? It pooped. Ugh. I heard a splash. Oh yeah, that was the yeah. log stop, coming stop, down. Stop. All right, trash bag me. <laughs> no, the handle didn't break. Just the the pin that it slides on. Well, not wanting to touch that through hull anymore, and without another through hull nearby to send the sink water overboard, we were going to have to drain the water into a gallon bucket and manually hoist that overboard. We would also need to temporarily install an electric water pump to retrieve water from the boat's large water tanks. What? Is that a no? Tighten the cables of the steering quadrant. Pack up the roller furler, of course. and check the mainsail. Fittings on the gooseneck were loose. Oh 
That's this needs way. to be turned. See? It needs to be like that. And team Robbie Scott had to install at least one reefing point because Rage had also likely popped her original backstay due to high winds and no way to reduce the mainsail on her way down to Ensenada. This big mama boat would need to be treated gently on this trip, we all agreed. The usual, right? It's worse than the usual. The evening before departure, the toilet system tried to sink the boat by revealing to us its sketchy water intake valve. It was going to be a relatively long journey all the way down the Baja California Pacific side, and then halfway back up again to Wymus on the inside coastline. Without an autopilot or wind vane, the four of us would be taking turns to always be at the helm. We would need to be careful with the compromised rigging, even though the upcoming forecast was favorable. And she's an extra sturdy boat from the 1960s. Scott backed us out of the slip and promptly came to a halt several meters from the fuel dock because there wasn't enough water for our 7.5 foot draft. But we backed out of the soft sand and went along our merry way without fueling up. Because who needs that stuff anyways? And there was plenty left in the tank from the cleaning and polishing. Just outside of Ensenada Port, there was a flurry of animal activity. Just the same as the first time that we had visited this place. With pelicans, dolphins, and more inhabiting the bay. All the way out to the Todos Santos Islands, just before turning south towards Sedros Island and Cabo San Lucas. And then all the way down the massive peninsula that is Baja. As we rounded the corner and started turning south, the wind rose up and went down again. We weren't sure what to put on or whether or not the jib would hold in this weather. We motor sailed into the sunset. We were visited by gray whales rummaging around in the water alongside us. Apparently, we were here during the prime whale watching season of Baja California. This would certainly not be our last whale sighting on the trip, and we pondered about the chances of colliding with whales at night as the daylight started to fade. Between whale watching intervals, Scott set up jack lines and harnesses for the night shifts. completely becalmed, and engine stopped. While the engine not running would be a problem for not making much headway in these calm conditions, we were several miles off the shoreline and able to keep the bow pointed in the right direction, more or less. Another thing too is, I'm worried that something might have just got sucked into the high pressure pump. When Robbie started up the engine again, it immediately shut itself off, indicating that the fuel was being blocked somewhere down the line. The tank was probably still quite dirty, and a couple of hours of bumping around on the ocean had kicked up some junk in the tank again. This would be a problem that would haunt us all the way along the journey. Debris that wasn't removed in the tank cleaning process was now clogging out the pickup and the fuel filter, causing the engine to stop at inopportune times. A UFO that only ended up being the planet Venus started to rise up in the sky during the early hours of the morning. Robbie wanted to make sure that the bacon-eating portion of the crew had a hearty breakfast after a stressful and colder than we're used to night.
just because it was daytime did not mean that the engine troubles left us. What's the pressure gauge supposed to be at? Like that? Zero. Needs full flow, everything's good, but it starts to climb. Which means this is having a hard time. And if this starts to depress, it means the pickup is having a hard time. So notice how when I pump this, it goes back down. Basically, material is stuck in the system. Yeah, or this rig core is getting, getting overworked and it's clogged. However, between stretches of fuel lines not being clogged and puffs of good wind, we were making great progress towards Turtle Bay, where we would definitely want to stop for fuel. With the winds shifting more and more from our beam towards our stern, Robbie worked on devising a simple anti-jibe system. Here attaching the line from the middle of the boom, but later on he would attach all the way from the back of the boom to the forwardmost cleat near the bow. We've got all sorts of exciting shit happening tonight on the boat. We've got to check the bilge more often. I'll probably pump this right now. We had water coming in through the dripless, not so dripless of course, shaft. Of course it's not dripless. But the boat's doing what, like nine, ten knots right now. <laughs> All's good. It's All's about good sailing. here. <laughs> if we can keep it from sinking, we'll, we'll be just fine. <laughs> On our second night at sea, Rage caught a lot of squid on deck as we surfed along in the cold, splashy night. There's squid everywhere on the boat. There's more back there. There's a third one, and there's a third one back there. I asked Robbie to use the poor little squid for something useful. You don't feel like eating deck squid? No. Pretty fresh. It smells fresh. I'm not appetizing. Really fresh. And he jumped at the chance of improving his fishing game with some fresh, smelly bait. A piece of copper wire right here. But you can't just hook these delicate little squids onto a hook. It helps to sew them on with a little wire. I'm just going to put it on and then just put a little copper to stop it from sliding down the hook. Be very gentle because it's really soft. Poor little squid. And pretty quickly we finally had our lunch on Ravi's line, while dinner was being pulled up by Christian. Time to celebrate eating fish after two days of trolling with some raw thin slices and a huge container of ceviche. The tuna cooked in lots of spices and fresh lime. With the remaining choice pieces placed on ice in the cooler, we had a bit of leftover meat to dry. First, Robbie would cover the fillets generously with salt and leave them in a container overnight. And you can reuse the brine. You just add more layers of fish. We're gonna have a fishy, briny box now. Yeah. Mm. This can just take upside. We were arriving this morning at Cedros Island, or with the humidity so thick in the air we could only see the Islas de San Benito on Cedros's outside. 
Say it, Ravi. Say it. Approaching the southern end of Isla Cedros and nearing Isla Natividad, we were on a whale watching tour again. Whales all around us as the sun was setting again. This is almost the exact same location where Ravi and I saw a blue whale as we sailed down on Rosa. But these were definitely more grey whales. Nothing to scoff at though, as these little guys can grow to be almost the same size as the boat. Tonight we would be pulling into Bahia Tortuga, Turtle Bay. In the dark, of course, which we would not recommend, however, the entry to the bay is very straightforward. Navionics was proving to be accurate alongside depths on the sounder and marked lights on the chart. We dropped the anchor far away and outside of other boats that we managed to spot with our big light and got to work on dinner. I want to try and straighten the stove out tomorrow. That's what like... happened to the engine today? Today we had, it was going beautifully, we had no issue, and I just went <laughs> tap tap on the pressure gauge and then it went <laughs> and shut down. It's like literally, I just went on a, on a dial to check. I must have loosened an air, bu air bubble or something, I don't know. Speaking so what are your troubleshooting ideas? Don't touch it. <laughs> <laughs> don't touch this! Don't, 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 don't touch me! I had cooked rice as soon as the first fish was on the line this morning, and I was nagging for proper sushi rolls all day. Bahia Tortuga is approximately halfway down the Baja Peninsula, and definitely a popular stop for cruisers who take part in the yearly Baja Haja Rally. but we found the bay to be very quiet and empty at this time in February. The other two sailboats seen in the shot pulled away before we even set our dinghy in the water. However, we were definitely among friends in Turtle Bay, as you will see later on. Now that we're nicely anchored and we've gotten a chance to test out the boat a little bit and <laughs> we've made it to Turtle Bay, uh, I'll, I guess I'll do a little walkthrough of the interior. This is 1968, very classically lined Morgan 54. This is apparently hull number one of the Morgan 54 sailboats. And I heard through the grapevine that Charlie Morgan, Morgan the designer of this boat, Charlie even wanted to join us on this voyage. This is the next best thing we can do. We can film a little bit, bring him along for the voyage, bring everyone along. Hope you enjoy.